downtown Hunter Brown showed up a bounce back start from the flamethrower himself, but the offense fell flat. Once again, the same tale happens. No hits with runners in scoring position. Let's talk about this on tonight's Locked on Astros. Yainel Diaz, this is Locked on Astros. Hello and welcome to Locked on Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are not. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on X at Eric Talk Astros. Find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Astros podcast your first listen every day. Whether it's on YouTube, go and subscribe to us. Go and make us your first listen on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify. Wherever you listen to your podcast, go and check out the Locked On Astros podcast and become an everydayer. Somebody that listens to our podcast every day. Win or lose, we're here for you. Uh, we're all going to get through this season together, guys. It's fine. We'll be fine. Everything will be fine. So, guys, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150. Bucks. Win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started today. So, Brett, when you're not screaming at leaving Hunter Brown in, possibly maybe inning too long, or maybe Sean Dubin in for inning too long, where can they find you at? Yeah, you know, honestly, I wasn't screaming tonight. This is just another game that, uh, look, we played an 11-5 and five Braves team and very good. You can find me at HML House on X, Instagram, and TikTok. You can find me at Back to the Bullpen on X and Instagram. You can find me at Strohs411 on Facebook, where I'm always positive, always Strohs. Look, Eric, uh, 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 there, were, there are a few storylines that you know we can look at tonight um obviously the offense um kind of doing what they've done most of the early season most of the young season and hunter brown answering the bell and and coming back and literally putting his team in a position to win setting up his team to win and you had a few weird calls in the game two weird calls in the game but eric in the last two games the astros have given up 10 runs in the ninth inning. Mm-hmm. So now it's the ninth inning that's killing us. My question is, where's Ryan Presley? Why hasn't he been used? Why was Whitley used and not pressing that situation? Um, why was Presley not used the night before? Is he hurt? He hasn't pitched in a couple days. I don't know what's going on with him. Um, the hater thing yesterday didn't work out well, and everybody's mad at him. But Whitley came in. He got to have his first start. It looked like the nerves were there. He settled down, got out of the inning without surrendering a run. Technically, that run didn't go to him. It went to Dubin. It was right. Dubin's run, so he didn't give yeah, up a run. Um, but he was wearing the MLB debut patch um, from Tops. I saw that. That was kind of cool. But the wrist issues, man, it, it is. It, we need to go to a doctor and find out what the prescription for this is because we cannot seem to solve this. I believe 0 for 5 today with runners in scoring position. Uh, they are six and thirteen on the season right now. The Astros lost six to two. Just imagine, maybe if you had Ryan Presley. Uh, I, I want to hear what they actually say after the game. Why wasn't Ryan Presley brought in this game? Just imagine if you brought Ryan Presley in in the ninth inning in this game, and maybe he came in and uh, kept it a two-two game or two-nothing game at the time. Then the Astros could have come back to tie it like they did in ninth inning. Uh, that what. What could have happened? We don't know. Instead, we left Sean Dubin, and he was doing great. I'm not, I'm not taking away from what Sean Dubin did, but I think he was uh, running out of gas. I know he's been a starter in the past. I know the Astros are looking at him as a long reliever, but at the same time, uh, you can tell when a pitcher is just losing it, and that was the situation in this game. So um, I think that what's going on is. I think Joe Spada is learning on the job when when you should take out this. And uh, we talked about this on Streaking Orange on PSF. And uh, Dusty Baker, A.J. Hinch, they've had experience uh, with other teams. Um, 
in these situations, when to pull a pitcher, when not to pull a pitcher. And uh, Joe Spada has been there with those managers, but this is the first time that it's his decision to make that move. Right. And so I, I'm not, I'm not going to say it's time to get rid of Joe Spada. I, it, he's going to have some learning curves. I'm right. not saying that it's, um, this is all Joe Spada's fault. There are a lot of holes on this team. I, I would say that this is a total team failure at this point. You've got the bullpen that's having issues. You've got the hitting that can't, uh, the risk issue. Uh, you, you, you're leading the league or at the top of the league in terms of hits, but you cannot yeah. get the key hits. And then um, uh, the starting pitching, uh, we saw a much better Hunter Brown. We'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, but so. over, as a team, they just can't put it together. And there's too many holes in this roster. And I think better lineup construction. I talked about it on the on last night's show, but um, I don't know if that's the issue. It just, it's just seems like no matter what, when somebody comes up with the bases loaded – or a key situation, that guy just kind of stubs a toe and can't do anything. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, there's so many things to pick apart. There's so many things you can pick apart. Um, I I do think that Joe Espada's um, use of the arms he has in the bullpen has been a little bit suspect. I think he's overused Martinez in the early season. I hope that doesn't bite him in the rear later on where he's going to have to get rest or maybe an IL stint because of overuse this early on, but he's been excellent. Um, Presley, you know, he's been what he's been. I mean, it's hard when you're, when the three guys that everybody in major league baseball and don't all of a sudden have amnesia y'all because every one of y'all in here, we're loving the hater signing. Y'all were loving a bray you hater and, and Presley in the back end. And everybody was cheering about it. Now everybody's like, ah, I don't know, man, it's not that good. And, and you know, when things go sour, like, oh, I knew it was bad all along y'all weren't saying that before the season started. Neither was any baseball analyst. So don't act like you all of a sudden know because you're watching something hindsight's 2020. Look, here's my point. I don't know that this is all managerial. Now the moves to put players in positions or to pull pitchers, that's a managerial move, but it's down to, it comes down to execution Joe spot is not the reason why the Astros aren't hitting with runners in scoring position. That's zero to do with the coach, with the manager. Okay. And right. last year we had all these people saying we should fire Dusty. And oh no, we should keep Dusty. He's the best. We should fire him. And it's like, look, I have a question. When you're having a bad streak at work, when you're not doing too well for a week or two, are you like, man, you know what? My boss should fire me because I suck right now. No, you don't do that. So don't do that with this man job, with this man's job. Look, I get it. I see it. It's so easy to armchair quarterback. And that's why I always try to lean towards a positive. Now, I'm not pretending like everything's okay. I mean, six and 13 is terrible. Is That's not just a slow start. But ladies and gentlemen, can we look at this division? The Rangers are in first place with a nine and nine record. The A's and the Angels are on top. They have eight and nine and seven and 10 record. The Mariners are tied with the A's with seven and 10. We are at six and 13. We are at six and 13, only three and a half games back. So can y'all spare me that it's all over? We are in a division that looks like the person who wins 91 games or 90 games is probably going to win this division. It's not going to take 95 wins. So I'm not worried about it. Our pitchers, Luis Garcia, and Jose Arquiti simultaneously threw bullpens today. That's a good sign. You've right. got help coming. Justin Verlander is coming. I'm not saying he's the answer to all, but eventually the dam's got to break. I feel the water teaming up against the dam, and I feel like there's cracks in the dam, and we saw those cracks, and we saw some water seep through against the Rangers. We just have to capitalize. They missed an opportunity against a AAA pitcher yesterday. Today, Ronaldo Lopez was dealing. He was the perfect counter. You have two high powered offenses. And until the fourth inning, until they got to the bullpen, that's when the water broke. Right. Right. But before that, it was a pitcher's duel. The two best offenses in the league couldn't score hardly a run until they got to the bullpen, except the Astros. All right, so just to uh, give you some positive news, um, the Astros in 2016 were 6-13 and 13 at this point, 
and they went on to finish the season with an 84 and 78 record. So there is a chance that the Astros could still finish with a winning record. So um, things are not that bad. Um, things can get better. I think things will figure it out when Chester Verlander from Valdez comes back. But yes, it's scary. Brett, you and I are probably going to argue about that home run ball because I saw you on Twitter saying that. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. And yeah, we'll talk about how good Hunter exactly. Brown did. So, yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. But, uh, guys, uh, thank you for making Lockdown Astros podcast. First listen. And this episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. I love this. I think you'll love it. And the basketball playoffs are here. NHL playoffs are around the corner. And you won't want to miss the funnest way to play fantasy sports. That's right. You can turn $10 into $100. You can win 100 times your money. They have injury insurance. In case one of your players goes out in the first half, they will not count that against you. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, an enormous selection of players, stat types, what makes Prize Picks the number one fantasy sports app. They offer weekly promotions. I use them. You na- it now offers Apple Pay for quick and easy deposits into your account this basketball season. So do what I did and download the app. Use the promo code Locked On MLB for your first deposit up to one hundred dollars. That's right. First deposit match of up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. This episode is also brought to you by Monopoly Go. It's an amazing app. Let me tell you, if you're tired of losing, if you're tired of watching the Astros lose, it's okay. Hold your head up. Let's go on a bank heist. Let's go take some money from your friends through the Monopoly Go app. That's right. Not real, but look, actually what is real is the money that you can win with Monopoly Go. It is on your phone. It's the Monopoly of old in the new form of a mobile app, and you have countless dynamic Monopoly boards. You can make you can make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with the wrecking ball. That's right. Charge other players rent. You can even work with your friends to crack open community chest and in tournaments to get extra rewards and climb the leaderboard. So get back out there, put your game face on, and download Monopoly Go today, now free at the Apple Store or Google Play. So, so Eric, let's let's look at, um, I, I want you to talk about the rules, and then I'm going to show you the actual rule book. There's a, there's a field manual for each individual stadium and it's got illustrated pictures. I'm a visual learner. So go ahead and tell us what, what it is we're going to talk about. Okay. So what happened was I forgot what inning it was. It was like in the third or fourth inning of today's game, Hunter Brown was dealing. And basically uh, it was um, Arcia. I believe he hit a ball that bounced off the left field of the Crawford boxes. It, it bounced off the railing up the top of the second inning. Yeah. Top of the second inning, okay. Uh, so and then uh, it kind of bounced off this the out of the screen, uh, the the field of play, and so um, on our side from the viewers, um, and I think by the replays, it would you can see if it hit anything, and then it bounced back. Oh, hold on. Uh, so then this was this is um, apparently the rules changed. Uh, te- technically, if it bounces back in play, then it is. Um, uh, still in play, but uh, Chaz McCormick did not play it as well. So uh, here's the rule. The batted ball and the flight strikes the yellow line on the fence or the top railing in the left center field at the point above the stands and bounds into the stands. It's called a home run. So basically, if it hits the rail and goes into the stands, that is a home run. The counterpoint to that is the batted ball and flight strikes the yellow line on the fence on the top of the railing in the left center field at the point and rebounds onto the playing field, it's in play. And so based off the replays that we saw uh, definitely on the screen, it's hard to, um, like there was not enough evidence to for us to see that it bounced off anything. It just looked like it right. bounced off that. But From, you said you found some more evidence? Well, basically what happened was, okay, so so here is the manual, okay? Um, and the reason why I'm showing you this, if you look at the red circle, okay, um, now this is actually, so 
it hit off of one of these rails right here at the top. And when it bounced, you know, the wall back there where it's got the Craig Biggio sign, it actually bounced and it hit the relentless sign as it was like it was going out. So it was over going over the fence. OK, um, and that. The, OK, here it is. This railing right here at the top. And it says if it goes into the stands, it's two bases, but it, it actually hit the wall or the sign above that. And because of that, it is considered going out of the ballpark. And that's why they called that a home run. Now, if it would have hit this green railing beneath, it would have been two bases. But the fact that it didn't go into the stands from that point, but it went, it went off the rail to the relentless sign and then came back in, it would be like it went off. Cause if it went off the relentless sign straight up, it's a home run because it's over the yellow line because the ball's still in play, right? Kind of like, remember the ball that Jose Canseco, when he played for the Rangers, yeah. got the ball that hit off his head and right. went into the stands. It was a home run. That's the effect that this had. The reason why at first I was like, well, that's a ground rule double is because you didn't see, like you said, you didn't see it hit. You just saw it come back on the field of play, but it in fact hit that relentless sign. And I had someone send me a message that was at the game. They're like, yeah, it bounced and it hit the back wall and then came back into play. It's the only reason why. Had it gone straight up, he would have had to go back to second base. But that was one run. That didn't alter the game. Well, at the time, it at was just time, one run. Yeah. At the time, it was one run. You know, but, you know, sometimes these rules are, like, really, really hard to, to, uh, to differentiate. But the reason why we talked about it is because it was like everybody was – it was a home run. It wasn't. And I was, I was trying to find this information. I actually tweeted at Callis and at Blummer to let them know because they were like, well, I don't know what the rule is. And so I looked it up and found it. Yeah. But you know, there you go. That was our Jose Canseco moment. So Hunter Brown, uh, he looked like a totally different pitcher last time. He, in two thirds of an inning, he gave up 11 hits and what was it? Nine runs in the first inning of that game. And it, it was an epic disaster. And people were saying, oh yeah, he's uh, once Verlander and Valdez comes back, he's probably out of rotation. When I say everybody, I mean me, uh, I'm one of those people too, but, uh, he actually came out and showed the poise, the control, the command that, uh, he, he showed. So, um, in six innings, pitch he allowed five hits he did have three walks uh the three walks was a little alarming but it's not too worrisome i know one of those was um in the seventh inning uh one of those hits was in the seventh inning too he had 88 pitch 48 strikes 36 wings 11 whiffs uh he allowed one run but uh he exited the game with uh i believe it was the bases loaded at that point and then sean Dugan, to his credit came in and allowed a sacrifice fly and then got the next two out. And so Sean Dubin did a great job. But my point is, you had a guy that struggled so bad in his last start. He gave you six runs, six innings against uh, one of the best offenses in baseball. Uh, only allowed one run. That one run at that time, a lot of people thought, well, well that was um, maybe a questionable run. Why leave him in there? I know he was still he still had some uh, pitches to throw and then you bring in Sean Dubin, Sean Dubin. Um, you could have brought him in to start the inning and maybe not load the bases in that situation. So did Joe Spada leave him in too long? 100%. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Fast forward to the next inning. Sean Dubin in the same situation. Uh, he's been in there since the seventh inning. And then you try to get an extra third inning from him and he's look looking like he's laboring. And then you, at one point, I was like, you're not going to bring Forrest Whitley in there because he's the only guy warming up in the bullpen. And what? with the bases loaded, luckily, uh, Sean Dubin was able to get it out. And uh, so then next situation, uh, um, next moment we know is that Forrest Whitley is making his major league debut. We'll talk about uh, that some more in a second. But he came in with runners at second and third. By that yeah. time... It was like four to nothing, and I mean four to two. Uh, no, f yeah, four to nothing at that time, and so then he gave up a two run double, and he settled down. So, yeah, well, you know, I I think that, but I I think both pitchers were were left in too long, but you also have to look at the track record of how many games we played in a row. Yeah, I know how much this bullpen has been has been taxed, and that was the one counterpoint I had to a friend that said, hey. He left him in too long. And I'm like, 
But who's he going to throw out there? And why is he putting Whitley out there? Whitley has no mileage on his arm. Might as well get him out there. I mean, you're not winning at that point. Your bats aren't swinging. You might as well put him in there. Don't know that I would have put Dubin in that pressure cooker situation. But Dubin did a real good job, like right. you said. He he got out of it with 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 limited damage. Now that one run that that Forrest gave up was credited to Dubin um, per baseball rules. But that was a tough situation. You could tell that his adrenaline, because before the game, I reached out to him and his people, and they said that Hunt that um Forrest Whitley was was really excited. His his adrenaline was high, but that he was calm. So and you could tell when he was on that mound, he was sweating bullets. I mean, it's been a long road that he's gone. And I'm tired of the, oh, he exists. Yes. that I mean, come on, man. Like, that's just giving the guy no respect. I mean, just because he has been been bit by the injury bug a million times, like, let's cheer this guy on. We need him to be successful. Um, we've got bullpen pieces. But, Eric, I'm just wondering. Is there going to be a shakeup? Is there going to be a lineup shakeup? You notice Abreu's been sitting more than playing. Mm -hmm. Singleton actually contributed today. Singleton was actually good today in the game. And maybe if Singleton gets more consistent playing time, maybe he actually adds some value to this team. But we've got to get hitting with runs scoring position. We'll talk about that after our next word from our sponsor. Another great sponsor that we have is FanDuel. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. FanDuel.com slash locked on is where I want you to go right now. It's playoff time in the NBA and the NHL. Baseball's in full swing. And FanDuel is your place to bet on every single game. So right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, bucks, win or lose. <laughs> Look, if you bet on the Astros to win and they lost, you still got the 150 bucks. So bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks. And it's all in the app that's safe and secure and easy to use. So what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Hey guys, thank you for making Locked on Astros pop podcast your first listen every day whether it's on youtube go and subscribe to us go and make us your first listen on apple odyssey spotify wherever you listen to your podcasts go and check us out uh go and check out the nfl draft special it's gonna be live tomorrow at 7 p.m it's gonna have um who's who are the texans gonna draft uh if your t favorite team's not the texans who are they gonna draft but also don't forget to check out the locked on astros postcast every after every game win or lose uh, Michael Connor is going to do a great job talking about the game. So if you can't get enough Astros talk, uh, check us out, but go and check out Michael Connor as well. And he does a great job over there. You can check all the locked on content on Amazon uh, fire stick as well as YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts, go and check out the locked on Astros podcast. So, so Eric, Eric wanted to tell you something. I saw something earlier. Someone posted a picture and they compared the stats of Jake Myers and Ronald Acuna Jr. <laughs> Chat, um, Jake Myers has more home runs than him. I mean, there's like four or five categories where he's better than him. And they're like, wait, is Jake Myers Ronald Acuna <laughs> or is Ronald Acuna Jake Myers? And that's what's weird about this about this team, Eric. The runners in scoring position like we know we can get hits. Someone's like, why is Singleton batting higher than these guys? And Todd, the show points out, he's got a higher OPS than Chaz and Bregman. Mm -hmm. Bregman, is, Bregman is popping the ball up. Bregman barely missed a home run tonight. Was out in front of it. Was a tad early. Absolutely smoked a ball. That could have turned the tides. You know, Kyle Tucker's home run was late. You know, Jordan Alvarez. I, I mean, look, Altuve went down on strikes on a really, really bad third strike call. Um, but you can't blame those things. Um, someone's mentioning here Diaz needs to visit visit the mound more when his pitchers are in trouble. He does, but they're very limited. What they have five mound visits in the whole game, right? So you got to pick and choose. But I'm sure the pitching coaches are going to work with him on that. I'm sure he'll get better with that. The bottom of the line is this: the bottom line, not bottom of the line. Wow, we are so messed up that we are the we we're, we're actually we're the bottom of the line right now because we're in last place. But the bottom line is this. They have to watch this. They have to 
forget about it and come to the ballpark tomorrow and act right. as if they've never lost and play like play like they've never lost and 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 have the fire like they've never won it. Like like go out there and go get a win. Go get a day game win, salvage a win before you go out on the road. Um, Eric, I just, you know, we've had a tough schedule in the beginning, but you know what we're not we're not talking about? Our schedule is going to be a lot weaker in the yeah. back end. And we're going to have arms and we're going to have rest and everybody's going to be healthy. And I'm pretty sure the offense will have figured it out by then because I think our hitters are too good to stay down. All right. So uh, I know I brought up the parallel earlier in the show about the 2016 Astros. They started off six and 13 as well. If you're wondering when the Astros in 2016 got to find a hundred, uh, we may have to wait a little bit. Uh, it was Tuesday, June 21st where they got to 36 and 36. So um, that that's how long it took for them to get back to 500. And then eventually they would finish with a winning record in that season. They got off to a rough start after everything that the success they had in 2015, they kind of got off to the bad start. I think that's what we're seeing here. Uh, but at the same time, we need to see signs that there's stuff that's being fixed. Yanir Diaz, he threw out his first two runners on base today. Uh, he could have had his, um, I know Brandon kept on saying, well, he could have thrown out uh, two runners if Pena didn't bobble that ball, but uh, you can't throw out the same runner twice. Uh, but uh, Acuna Jr., uh, he almost got hurt in this game because um, he actually, uh, one of the balls, I forgot who hit it, but it hit Acuna Jr. in the knee cap as right. he was trying to catch it. And that ball got away. I think, uh, I don't think it was Myers. It was somebody, it was it Pena? No, I, I, think, say it was Pena. I think it was Jake Myers, but anyways. Yeah, no, uh, no, uh, no. Jake Myers was an actual legit hit. It went that way. Okay. So, but um, other than that, um, I do want to focus a little bit on Justin Verlander. He said that he feels good after uh, pitching and uh, they haven't announced when he's going to, uh, they're he's going to start. But um, the idea is that he's likely going to start. How do we know that? They sent down Spencer Arigetti as the alternate to um, Forrest Whitley coming up. So um, we do know that uh, he's likely going to pitch. So we don't know when. Uh, he's going to either pitch on Friday or Saturday against the Nationals, Joe Espada said. So the final decision will come tomorrow. Uh, he threw a bullpen and felt good. Uh, you mentioned it earlier, uh, or Kitty threw in a bullpen, right. but the key thing is he threw off a slope. That's the key exactly. thing. It's not just, yeah. yeah. No, right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I know it's not a full blown thing, but look, I'm not saying we're the Braves of 21. Okay. But the Braves in 21 played 500 ball up until September. They did not have a, they had a winning record by one game in one month. They were, I believe, at 500 or below 500 at the All Star break. They only won 85 games. And I, again, I'm not saying we're the 21 Braves because I think the 21 Braves, pitching wise, were really, really, really good, if I remember correctly, because I was at one of those games. I was at the one game. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Jack. Um, I was at the one game they won that year um, in the World Series game, too. Um, but it's just absolutely amazing to me. Uh, we're just not able to get those key hits in those key moments. And then we break out with a random home run. We break out with a random three hit game, four hit game. And we go out and we can beat the brakes off of the second place or I'm sorry, first place Rangers, but we have opportunities against the Braves and we just don't take them. I, I just, I'm going to stay positive. I'm going to think that something's going to turn around. I mean, if John Singleton's hitting over 200 to where before he was hitting a buck 67 or, or 0.67, and now he's hitting over 200 and he's starting to turn things around. Altuve is still having one of the best starts of his career. Um, Bregman just hasn't found his stride yet. I think Jordan continue. He's going to continue to hit. Um, I just, I think things start going better. They play better on the road, guys. They just simply do. If they can salvage a win tomorrow, they can go on the road, get a getaway win, go on the road, go to Washington, take care of business there. Washington's playing a lot better than what people projected early on, but I don't think they're the Braves, and I don't think they're the Rangers, 
So I think you have a very winnable series going away after your day game tomorrow. Yes. So the Astros have only scored 13 runs in the first 18 innings in the series. Um, so they've got to score some runs. They can't keep on allowing all the runs that they're doing and uh, just struggle uh, offensively like they're doing. So I think that Hunter Brown start today is encouraging. I think the Verlander news is encouraging. I think that Forrest Whitley finally making his long anticipated deb- debut is encouraging. And I don't know if it, you saw his wife's shoes, but um, she had some custom made shoes that had Whitley on the back. So uh, that was pretty cool. But um, actually Whitley was almost asleep yesterday when he got the call from uh, Mickey story and he said, Hey kid, you're going to the big leagues. So wow. uh, that was, that was pretty cool. And um, he said, uh, it was the first time Whitley says it was the first time in my life. I really kind of felt that surreal moment where I was kind of having a hard uh, time discerning real life and what was really going on. It was a pretty crazy moment. So I can imagine that he probably didn't get a lot of sleep. He was probably calling a lot of people saying, Hey, I'm finally doing it after being drafted in 2016. I'm finally made it to the big leagues. Guys, this is seriously I'm pretty sure. He, you remember I was drafted that long ago. I'm pretty sure he didn't bring that up. But yeah, good job. You know what? Welcome to the bigs, Whitley. Let's go Astros. Let's go take the Braves out. Um, let's do it like we're taking them out of the playoffs back in the early 2000s. Um, Chris Burke, can you come back and pinch hit for us? I would love that. This has been a great show. He's Eric Man Heisman. I'm H. John Wellhouse. This is your number one Astros podcast. You are the number one fans. You're the real MVPs. Maybe we need to employ you to hit for the Astros. Let's go. JP France, let's go ahead and pitch a shutout tomorrow, and let's score some runs. Go Astros.